This is the healthcare sector, November 2021 analysis. Uh, we only have uh, five companies uh, in the healthcare sector in our basket of stocks, so uh, I thought it'd be uh, easy to uh, just kind of go through all of them. Currently, the program is calling for CAH in our down moves portfolio, uh, but the up moves portfolio, which is uh, currently trending at the moment, uh, is calling for Merck, where we are currently. Um, I did discuss before that Merck has a November 30th uh, date to have their COVID drug approved or denied by the FDA. And so um, it'll be nice to kind of wait around and see uh, what happens with that. But we currently have a sales signal on Merck. And so we have to uh, look at uh, potentially uh, selling out of uh, Merck to make some money. Uh, so let's take a look at all of these. Uh, right away, I see that uh, Pfizer has uh, almost an 8% dividend, uh, which is crazy. I, I didn't I didn't know. Uh, I mean, we got into Pfizer way back in 2015 when we first started because of its dividend. Um, and, um, yeah, I had no idea it got all the way up to 8%. That, that is that is nice uh current price 45 uh mark is at 89 cah is at 48 um it looks like the dividend between cah and, and merck is about the same um so nothing really to see there uh the pe ratios i think will be a really uh good uh comparison uh except for uh cvs uh which is a retail store not a a drug company uh, but as you can see here uh, BMY Mellon um, I can't I don't I don't I forget the name of the company but yeah I know it's Mellon something so BMY Mellon uh, looks like uh, they're losing money so they have a negative uh, PE ratio uh, which we know uh, it's not possible uh, but just looking at the difference between CAH and Merck we see that Merck has a much higher PE uh, than than CAH as well as, as Pfizer, uh, which has a much lower PE ratio, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, so far, Pfizer is looking really good in this uh, comparison. Um, as we can see, uh, the the high uh, for Pfizer is right around 32. So I mean, it's it's way off of its um, of its highest uh, PE. Uh, CAH, same thing, way off its high. Uh, same thing for Merck. So. I think that is uh, kind of a trend right now in uh, the health sector where these companies um, have done really well, uh, you know, over the last five years. And, and right now they're not doing so well um, for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it's COVID. Maybe it's uh, uh, politics surrounding drug prices and, um, you know, uh, universal health care and things of that nature. Um, looking at the average PE, though. Uh, it looks like uh, Pfizer is about uh, is average. Uh, CAH is still off a ways, and then Merck is is off. So um, when you think about an average uh, PE ratio, you know this is what it's been up and down over the last five years. This is kind of where it's been. So Pfizer is, is right where it's supposed to be. The rest of these guys look like they have some catching up to do uh, compared to uh, where they have been in the past. All right, let's take a look at uh, net profit again. Uh, these first uh, four are going to be uh, uh, fairly comparable. Looks like uh, Pfizer uh, beats out everyone with, with Merck coming in. Uh, I'm not going to say a close second, but comes in second. Turn on assets. Looks like Pfizer and Merck are both. Uh, Doing fairly well uh, in that regard. CAH uh, is kind of uh, maybe a second. Uh, well, no, not not a second. Well, yeah, a second because we can't use CVS in, in this in this case. All right, cash on hand. CAH has a whole bunch of cash, and so uh, we looked uh, uh, earlier at the portfolios that are performed. Best, and we know that the M score, which uh, takes into account uh, cash, um, is a is, is a 
for whatever reason, uh, those those portfolios are performing uh, really well right now. Uh, Pfizer, not a lot of cash. Uh, Merck, a uh, bit more. Uh, Cash to debt. Uh, we want this number uh, to be large, right? So, you know, we want more cash than debt. And so uh, it looks like CAH uh, comes off better in that regard. Um, Merck and BNY are about the same. Pfizer is way down there, meaning that Pfizer probably has a lot of debt on the books or they don't have a lot of cash. Um, I know I discussed before about Merck wanting to go out and purchase other companies, so it uh, looks like they have a little bit more cash on hand to do so. Uh, but CAH just blows them all away uh, with, with their cash. And remember, this is cash per share. What I really need to do with this, and um, I've thought about this over the past couple of months, is I really need to change this into a percentage um, as far as the percentage of cash uh, per share. Let me go ahead and, and do that now. This may or may not work, but I'm curious. that takes us okay so yeah so yeah even still so CAH 20 almost 25 percent of the stock price is made up of nothing but cash I mean that's huge that is huge all right let's keep going uh, so you got cash to debt all right shares short uh, now this is kind of a big deal here only because uh, CAH is the only one uh, that's higher than everyone else meaning that there is more people in the market uh, that are betting on this stock losing money. And I think that's reflected uh, here um, with the, the stock price. And so uh, this is the highest the stock price has been over the past year, okay? And CAH is 22% below uh, that number. Uh, Merck is basically at its highest price that it has been all year. Same goes for CVS, and Pfizer is off just a bit. I can imagine uh, that Pfizer was was way up uh, due to their uh, their COVID uh, vaccine, and it's probably come back a little bit. Um, we got to get this finished. All right. And so we see that Pfizer is 36% above its low. CAH is pretty much at its lows, um, which is concerning. And then we see Merck is 26% above and CVS 50% above. So um, what this means for me is that uh, Pfizer, even though it's 12% you know, below its high, it's much higher than its absolute uh, lowest point. Uh, over the last year, and so that means that uh, that stock is actually performing a little better. All right, let's look at the alpha. Now, here's the deal, okay? Currently, the up move portfolio uh, is performing the best, followed by down moves. But what that really means, though, is that uh, the market is favoring uh, growth type uh, companies, right? And that's a huge difference. Uh, from what we saw in July when we looked back and everything was really more about defensive uh, uh, posturing and going into these defensive uh, names, which is what a, a down move uh, type portfolio is. And so now what I'm looking at is I'm looking at uh, the other portfolios like alpha, like return, right? Um, because that's going to be more of a, an up move type uh, portfolio. So Looking at this, looks like uh, CVS, uh, Merck, and Pfizer are pretty much all in the same place. CAH, uh, not so much of an alpha name. Um, and then, of course, we see the up move here. Um, like uh, BMY is the higher score. So I'm curious as to why 
uh, BMY did not make uh, the Upmove portfolio. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, CAH is currently the Upmove portfolio. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Here we go. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about down moves. Okay. For up moves, the larger number is the better score. All right. So for up moves, uh, Merck uh, really beats out everyone by quite a bit. Um, and then so for down moves, we're looking at the lowest number. Um, and CAH uh, beats out everyone by quite a bit. Um, the beta... We all know that the beta means that this company is not going to lose um, a lot of money. And so uh, that goes to BMY Mellon, followed by, looks like, uh, Merck. Um, so not going to lose a lot of money. Um, trending up move. So far, everything looks good. Uh, CAH uh, does not have uh, a great beta. Uh, Looks like second to last, actually. Uh, so I think that's telling. And then here we are with the, the return. And Merck. Merck beats out everyone. Um, has a higher return. Volatility. This is how much it moves around. I expect the beta, the better beta to be the lower volatility. And that is pretty much... Uh, what's going on here? Yeah, 19. Pfizer is a, a little bit better, but, um, you know, when you compare the volatility um, with the return, with the beta, you know, up move is trending. I mean, I think Merck is where we stay. And now looking at the, the M score, now I did talk about cash on hand uh, being a, bit part, a big part of the M score. And so we see that uh, CAH uh, does win out on the M score, but not by a lot, not by a lot at all. Um, and I have to imagine that has to do with, you know, return on assets and all those other things that we discussed. Um, looks like Merck is actually, um, yeah, Merck is actually the second best. So, um, yeah, I mean, as of, as of right now, I mean, it, it's all Merck. Uh, definitely looks like uh, the better deal. Let's take a quick look um, at this point just for fun because, I mean, can't can't, uh, can't imagine going anywhere else on this. All right. Um, something weird going on here. And, I don't have uh, I don't have an MVP for the sector. Not sure why that is. Take a look. Ah, that's why. So, All right, so MVP for the sector, uh, CAH, again, followed closely behind Merck, and then Merck even, again, beats them out on the rolling 12-month period return. CVS, though, is really kicking butt. Um, my goodness, that, that dividend for Pfizer is, is nice. Let's see. And something else queued up here. Oh, okay, that's right. This is the uh, moving averages. All right. So we see that uh, CAH is both under its 200 and under its 50. Uh, that's not good news. Not sure what's going on with CAH, but obviously... Uh, price performance uh, has been fairly poor uh, over the last two months and, and getting worse. Um, same for BMY. Uh, the rest of these guys see uh, Merck, uh, yeah, all green. 
Pfizer is actually under its 50 day, but getting better. So uh, maybe it crosses its, its 50 day. Maybe that has something to do too with uh, Merck's COVID drug. Um, I don't think I discussed this before, but you know the the COVID drug that Merck is coming out with um, is for um, treatment of COVID uh, and possibly prevention of COVID as well. And so if vaccines, which I believe are required now for most employers, but not all, right? So that means that we still don't have a 100% complete requirement mandate for everyone to get a vaccine. Uh, if this pill gets approved, uh, then maybe you don't necessarily need the vaccine. You know, uh, the executives over at Merck say that the vaccine is the best way to go. Uh, but even if you have the vaccine, you can still catch COVID, especially with all the variants and stuff like that. And so they're thinking that the drug is going to be used in conjunction with uh, the vaccine. And so maybe that's why we're seeing um, uh, Pfizer uh, coming down some off of its highs. So anyway, so that's that. I think uh, everything we, we've seen points us uh, towards Merck. So Merck is where we're going to stay. It's a very small position for us. Um, but it is important that, you know, when we have these sales signals that we do um, look at, you know, potentially selling, right? Uh, but for now, we're going to enjoy uh, where we are and we're going to uh, keep those gains. Um, hopefully, we don't see the price come back uh, from, from where it is now. If it does, that's the market. That's, that's the risk that we take.